Welcome to Hollywood on Top, I'm Marta Bloom. Each week I like to bring in a friend, someone in the know, someone to help me break down what's going down in Tinseltown. You may think you know my co-host today from her career as a reality star, but let me tell you her real life has been even more surreal. Celebrity marriage, notorious divorce, rebellious family, all in front of a camera. For anyone else, this was spell disaster, but for her, it's a story of victory with a happy ending. From her hit series, The Gastronaut Girls, to stints on Extra, The View, Entertainment Tonight, Oprah, The Insider, and Showbiz Tonight, she's still keeping up with the Kardashians, and insiders tell me she's about to be back in the reality game. Now, she's focused on growing a jewelry and fashion empire, and I think she is well on her way. In terms of what's hot in Hollywood, if there is something to be said, you can bet she'll have something to say. Please welcome my good friend, Lisa Gastineau. Hi! Hi! Oh my goodness. This is the most beautiful view in Hollywood. I, I can't even imagine. Oh, I thank you, thank you. I know, I'm so proud of this studio. So how are you? You look wonderful, beautiful as always. Oh, it takes a village. It's harder and harder. <laughs> Thank God, oh my God. Honey, yes, you're the village. Up. You're the village. Are you like kidding? <laughs> <laughs> so we have so much to talk about. We do. We do. We? we do. Okay, girlfriend, let's go back to the beginning. Okay. You were the first reality TV star, superstar, I should say. Do you think you get enough credit for it? <laughs> I recently saw Nene Leakes and Brandy Glanville and all the girls from all the Bravo series. And I said, listen, girls, y'all should give me $20 a week from your paychecks because Brittany and I were the ones who were starting reality <laughs> glamour TV. I mean, exactly. there was reality TV, but they weren't glammed up. Before that, it was like Big Brother and everything. And we were doing glamour. So what I think is that when you started, it was the beginning and it wasn't really branded as reality TV. You know, that's interesting because when we first started doing reality, no one knew what it was. And I remember, like, I've always been a fashion hound and I always was a big buyer of fashion and I've been in the fashion business on stores and things. Mm -hmm. And there were particular stylists who will remain nameless, right. who subsequently went on to have TV shows. But when we went to go pull from them or go to fashion shows, they're like, oh, we don't do reality. And I'm laughing later on that they were out there doing their own reality shows. So we really were on the forefront of it and, and creating a part of, not creating, I, the producers get the credit, they created it, but we were one of the original ones who were out there on the forefront of doing glamour reality, of like showing that it takes a lot. It takes a village, it takes hair, it takes makeup, it takes hairdressers, cosmetic, clothes, fashion you know, everything that goes into a glamorous life. So I'd like to say that we were the start of it and hopefully we're not finished. No, you definitely were, you definitely were. And and, and uh, the interesting thing is that um, reality TV has blown up and is so, so popular to just hear the word. Yeah. If you had any idea how this reality TV was gonna blow up back in the days when you were shooting, would you have done done things differently? Yeah, I would have done a lot of things differently. Like First what? thing I would have done is like had a PR team or had people around to protect us because we were so vulnerable. Whatever was photographed was like out there. Because it was, was not done was before. No one, there was no one out there to say, no, 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 we can't air that. You know, they did not air us being perfect. Even though you see reality now and it's like, boom, boom, it's the beat. They'll show something like bad yeah. and then they'll make it, oh, but then you're a hero. We, whatever we did, that was the way it was. Right. So we didn't have that opportunity to, like, to get redemption. We didn't have control over how we were portrayed. So that's w really... Will you do it again? Would I do it again? I, totally. I love, I love reality TV. And I would, love, I would love to get an opportunity to show the part of me that wasn't shown. The, sh the part that shows that I'm you know, hardworking, that like I care about my friends, I care about family, my animals, my causes, and you know, have an opportunity to not just, we can be glamorous and not be shallow. And I think there's right. a, that's an important distinction that to be glamorous and not be shallow, and I've never been shallow. So was your show partly scripted? It wasn't scripted per se, that we know how scripted mm -hmm. shows are. It was topical. 
uh, actually, there was a big difference between season one and season two. Season one, it was like, okay, let's just roll. Here we are. We're going to be in Aspen. Let's see what you really do. Season two, we got a little bit more efficient budget-wise. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. they knew that if we were going somewhere, yeah, there would have to be like an outcome. In other words, if you put people on the Empire State Building on the rooftop and you know that Godzilla is going to come, you know there's going to be a reaction. <laughs> Season one, we'd be sitting there going, oh, gee, what are we doing here? Like, so you know, it, it wasn't necessarily more or less fake. It, was, it, it had more of a focus. It's like, it's like doing, uh, what would you say, uh, improv. Yeah. You know, you and roll. I also think that back in the days, like, if, you, if it gave you a bad rap and uh, maybe you couldn't work again, I mean, it, like, this was, like, really common back in the days. Today, you are bad, you have a bad rap, and everybody wants to hire you. <laughs> right? You don't have a bad rap. No, no, but I'm saying, but I'm saying you know, oh, in you general. Mean, if you get bad. In general, yeah. 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 Like, the crazier you are, the, the more popular you are. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's insane. Well, you know, I was borderline crazy. I was crazy. I was crazier than most moms my age, but I wasn't crazy enough, you know, to, like, urinate in public or do some of the stuff that people come out with now. But now, <laughs> I, oh my, I'm, I'm glad you weren't. <laughs> like, okay. no, but you see that so and so was outside the Abbey doing like, I was more irreverent, irreverent. and I and I pride myself on being irreverent. That's like, I'm I don't fit in that cookie cutter mold, and um, that was part of like the spontaneity and what makes things interesting. Now I'm I'm more focused on like the business part. You know, I know at the end of the day who I am whatever my image is, is, is my brand. Right. So I'm very conscious that I'm selling jewelry and I, and I have a spiritual element that I have to, like, I have to practice what I preach. That's you know, right. if I'm selling love and, and unity and kindness, that's who I have to be. And it's, it's not a facade. It's really the real deal. Okay, so word is out there that you're taking reality to a new level with a book. And I am hearing NFL, Hollywood, powerful business people is this a Hollywood tell-all? Well, it depends on how we phrase tell-all. I am telling my story. It's my autobiography. And I mean, you can't make this stuff up. It's right. so much juice. I've been in the game, so to speak. I, I married my ex-husband when I was 19. Mm -hmm. You know, we had this like over-the-top life. We, we were the original Barbie and Ken back in the day. And then I can see that. he segued on in, in a relationship with a, a Hollywood actress. And I, you know, was known for dating notorious, know, not notorious bad men. boys. But yet I date, dated politicians. I dated You dated Donald Pet Trump. Well, I mean. We, I know you did. We, I know you did. I <laughs> we know did. I don't know what we call it dating. We've been to dinner and we're good friends. Yeah. We are good friends. Okay. You know, I mean, I might not agree with every one of my friends' politics that I have to qualify. Okay. Because I know you doesn't mean we have to agree. Exactly. But we agree to disagree. Okay. Let's talk about your jewelry. Okay, let's talk. I wear it. Kim K wears it. Naomi Campbell wears it. Heidi Klum wears it. You even gave me a piece for my little grandson. He loves it and wears it all the time. And what's unique about it is the power of the stones. Exactly. Tell me about the power. Stones have energies that when we manifest an intention, the stones help us amplify it. So think of things as like, as you would a speaker, it's an amplifier. So if you necessarily, I mean, there are so many that people are so much aware of, like rose quartz, every, most people now know right. that rose quartz is love. But there are other stones that, that most wouldn't know, like peridot, that you know, helps manifest wealth. So everybody, I mean, we're all on that same wheel to get wealthy, and, and Labradorite is to, for dreams. And so it's complicated, it's a science, and that's what yeah. I, I sell. I, spell, I sell a spiritual RX. So it's like you come to me and you say, what is it you need? I'm like the shrink of stones. Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the day, I yeah. wanna create a beautiful totally. piece of jewelry. Totally. And that's going to be lisagastineau.com, correct? Exactly. Yes. I like the connection between the stones and the spirituality. Will you stick around? Absolutely, I can't wait. <laughs> Great. Speaking of connections and spirituality, our next guest discovered his gift for communicating with the departed when he was 10. Now in his early 20s, he's connecting some of Hollywood's biggest names with messages from the beyond. 
showing a wisdom that often seems far beyond his years. Now in the third season of his hit show on E, he's becoming the most famous clairvoyant in the world. Who is he? Find out when we come back. I'm Marta Bloom. For What's Hot in Hollywood, from the top of Hollywood, this is Hollywood on Top.